Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm here with a BMW performance driving instructor, Brian Randall. We have just completed the Golden Gate chapter inaugural M Club Day. Indeed. Okay, so we're gonna chat with Brian here. So Brian, tell us how you got started in racing and sort of the transition to what you're doing now. Uh, yeah, I started racing when I was about seven, eight years old. Uh, I had a neighbor that owned uh, a truck parts shop across the street and he had a bunch of ATCs. And I started racing, his son was a friend of mine, he was a year younger than me, his name was Alan. And we began racing them, and I was real good at it, and I started getting competitive in those for a while. Nice. Uh, survive with my clavicle largely intact, uh, those things are dangerous. Yep, um, always important. Moved on from dry racing those to racing Honda Odysseys competitively, which right. was the precursor to the minivan. Yeah, so it wasn't the Honda Odyssey that you guys all know today, it was something completely different. No, and they were very skinny and tall, so the center <laughs> of mass was real high, so they just want to roll over all the time, and I realized this, it's fun, but this is another thing that you can't go that quick in. Right, because otherwise you'll break something, or yes. worse. Yes, and I grew up near Pismo Beach, California. So there's a long, nice. and Guadalupe Beach, there's, a, there's 60 miles of dunes there. So you grow up, if you're out there, racing a lot of sand rails, dune buggies, things like that. Cool. So I kept doing that, and then eventually that same neighbor uh, built a dirt midget car, again for his son, who went and tested it. He just wasn't very good at it. So I began driving it to test it, and I was good at it. And it, I literally went, I started racing it for them, for coach truck parts, nice. uh, for a couple of years. And uh, my parents, of course, didn't, they didn't buy into this as a career. It was a very different time then. They were very financially minded, which they should have been, but. Yeah, because racing can be very expensive. Yes, and there was no social media like there is now. So it was a, it was a little bit different then. And the, the success didn't really translate to them. In their mind, there was like, there's no career here. Right. So they kept pressuring me to go to college. So out of nothing but pure spite, I went to music <laughs> school and uh, that career didn't really go anywhere. I mean, I did well in college, but after college, I moved to Los Angeles. And okay, as you do after... Who do, yes, right? yeah, call, you go to LA or New York or some big metropolitan area. And my girlfriend at the time was a, I had no plans on driving at that point in time. I didn't really know what I was gonna do. And my girlfriend at the time uh, was a production assistant for television commercials. Okay. And I wanted to see what that was like. What does it look like when you film a commercial? What is that all about, you know? So I went to watch it and it was on Angeles Crest Highway. And there was a stunt involved in a car. It was like a tricked out Datsun 510. Ooh, and okay. I had not really privy to what happened exactly, but the the director and the stunt guy and the producer were in an argument about the nature of the drive and that it wasn't what they talked about. And uh, my girlfriend opened her mouth and she was like, my boyfriend can do that. And so said, uh, fine, you're hired, get out there and drive that. And they were in a bind and he was like, can you? And I remember I remember thinking to myself, that looks dangerous, but can it wasn't my car. Yes. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. it wasn't my car. I was like, hey, can I have a few practice runs? And they were like, well, yeah, but we're, we need to shoot before the light comes up, or the sun comes up, so you have to do it quickly. So I did, and it worked out. Per I didn't think, I thought it was kind of garbage to me, my, my attempt, but it was good enough for them where they were able to cut it, because I'd never been in the car before. <laughs> and um, the, the universe has a way of taking turns or pivoting sometimes when you make a decision. And after that, things just started coming my way all of a sudden. I began driving for other television commercials. Awesome. And then also, I got a random call to work a job uh, uh, for BMW. And I, I went, I didn't, really know what I, was, I didn't know anybody there, and the head guy was like, hey, do you wanna come karting with us after work? And I was like, sure, sure, sure yeah. yeah. So I went karting and, and they didn't know who I was and I was just as fast as they were. And he was like, hey, you're good and behind the wheel of this car. Uh, I think I have more work for you if you want it. And I was like, sure. Jeez. And that just led to me driving for, at first for BMW a long time ago. And then that, I started working, you meet people. Mm -hmm. I began working for Audi, AMG, Mercedes, Porsche, Skip Barber Racing. One job came after another. Cause it's like any other job. Don't be a jerk, show up on time, don't break the equipment. Right do something smart, right, while you're there. And I was lucky, I made a lot of mistakes, but never when someone was looking. <laughs> so, so, so I it survived that way. So it seems like you sort of fallen ass backwards in the gigs. Yes, this was <laughs> not my plan. But I remember watching the Biography Channel back in the day, and every time somebody's life was really interesting, it was always very circuitous. It never happened the way you thought it would. There was never really a plan at work. Right, so like one little thing, showing up to watch a TV commercial, mm -hmm. sparks this whole thing. You get the driving commercial, word gets around. Mm -hmm. Hey, this Brian Randall guy, he's not too bad. Yeah, he's nice to be around, he's not a jerk. Yep. Uh, so yeah, so we end up, I end up driving for a number of, a lot, a lot of the commercials for automobiles. Uh, so it's usually Anything we would have seen? Yeah, or maybe? Some stuff that's not BMW. Right. Um, a lot of the, the Chevy Real People commercials 
where okay. that one guy interviews people and he's like, what yes. kind of car do you think this is? So a lot of those, the driving there is not the actual people. Right. So a lot of driving for commercials is not terribly exciting. They die. <laughs> yes, yes. It's like, that's very pedestrian, yeah. but they have to have somebody do it. So you to end make up it doing, look exciting. Yes. And actually, the first time I ever drove behind a, um, a Russian arm, I couldn't believe how close they wanted me to the camera. They're like close, and I, I couldn't see the camera anymore, so close to the car, and I was like, damn. And I realized something. I was not a rich kid, so I had to be careful with the car. So I would never dive bomb somebody. I'd always wait in second place until they made a mistake, and they usually did. Mm -hmm. So I got, I'm gonna be patient. That's paid off for driving for a camera because you need to do the same thing. Be consistent, don't right. overcook it, be patient, all those things have paid off. So in a weird way, it was training me for the job, right. unintentionally. And that takes us basically up to the performance driving school where you're now a full-time employee. Yes, yes. And where else can we find you driving BMW, BMW besides the performance driving school? Do you do the UDEs? I do. I used to do the EDEs. Now that I'm full-time, I'm no longer on UDE, although it's a great program yeah. and I love that. I did it for five or six years, loved that. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty much just here. I'll occasionally do some M-Track Day stuff. I'm doing yeah. something for Continental for in Uvalde, Texas in May. Um, but largely it's just stuff here at the performance center now, which awesome. I love. I'm super happy to be here. Yeah. All right. So quick questions. First car. My first car was a 1962 Volvo B1800. It looks like an old 40 Ford, has mm -hmm. a thermometer style speedometer. Yeah, I love that, loved that car. And yeah. current car? I have a BMW 430 Grand Coupe. Yeah. What the color, what's the color on that one? It's brown, which I like a lot, actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like get a brown car. Brown station wagon from the I 70s. just, I remember, I loved the show Buck Rogers when I was a yep. kid, and uh, Gil Gerard, I saw him at Universal Studios one time, he was cruising on like a convertible Mercedes that was brown, the same color, and I always just loved it, so I'm a big fan of it. Awesome, all right, so favorite BMW you have driven? And top three. M3, without a doubt. And current like, generation? Well, current generation. People okay. scoff at that to me. Man, that is the ultimate slide machine. You can slide it with one hand while you're eating a sandwich. You right. know, it's and just... We won't show him doing slide in one hand, but we have some video of, <laughs> of Brian taking us around on the hot lap, drifting it around. So he's not eating. I'm not eating a sandwich at that point in time. Yeah. No. But yeah, I love that car. To me, it's a perfect combination of race car for the road. It calms down and relaxes when you want it to. And at the same time, it can also attack you with scissors if you want to be yeah. real aggressive behind the wheel. How about of it. favorite car you've driven? Morgan three wheeler. You have. Yeah. That car is epic. And I absolutely want one of those cars. I know it's not a BMW. BMW doesn't make anything like that. Yeah. And the I if when you're in it, it feels like you're inside of a watch. Meaning like everything it does you can feel. It isn't hiding any of the mechanics from you and I absolutely love that. Awesome. Okay. Favorite track or top three tracks that you've driven? Uh Laguna Seca is high on the list. And this is gonna shock some people about why I like, not Laguna Seca, of course, that's an obvious choice. Yep. I'm a really big fan of Chuck Walla. Okay. And, and I don't, people are like, kind of like, what? And I'm like, I just, I like the track a lot. To me, it has some unusual corners, some corners that are a lot of fun. That was also a place, you know, memories are attached to where we drive a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And that was a track where the first time ever, ever, anyone ever said, hey, go drive this R8 and just unleash it, just have fun. And so there's, yeah. I have nothing but fun associated with that place. So okay. I like that a lot. Uh, Daytona is a lot of fun. The history of it there, of course, uh, the track's amazing. Uh, hitting that banking at speed, there's nothing else like it. Um, I, unfor you know, I haven't had the chance to drive a bunch of tracks in Europe. I just haven't had that chance. Yeah, well, that um, sort of leads into the next question. Mm -hmm. Top three tracks that you'd love to drive, but haven't. A uh, Nürburgring, of course, in real life, like everybody yeah. says. Um, I would love to drive the old Brooklyn's track, which is impossible to drive now, but I would love to drive that. Uh, and probably Spa. Okay. Would probably the three that I'd really like to drive that never happened. Plenty of thousands of hours in virtually driving. Yes. It never prepares you for the real thing. No, no, no. But Laguna Seca, you know, I was really lucky when I worked at Skip Harbor at the time. Uh, they were kind of on their downward trajectory. Yep. And the upside of that as an instructor was I did hundreds of laps in that track with almost no parental supervision. And I was responsible with it, but it gave me a chance to drive it in a way that I never would have had right. there been more of a structure around you. And that is a magical place to drive a car without a doubt. Yeah. All right. So maybe final one here. Dream Garage, maybe three cars. No budget. The Morgan three wheelers on it for sure, without a doubt. Um, I'm a big fan. I'm a, I'm a big fan of unusual cars. So Ferrari F40, without a doubt. I drove one of those once for about a hundred yards. Oh, you're lucky dog. Even about hundred <laughs> <Yeah>. yards, right? <laughs> and it was absolutely incredible. Uh, and I know that everyone's gonna say I'm being stupid, but I love the M3, man. 
That's my favorite car in the world. I think it's the best car in the world because the, when you turn, when you think about price versus what it'll do, yeah, that's the amazing. greatest combination. Amazing combo. Yeah. All right. So, where can we find you on social media if people are interested in following you? Sure. So uh, on Instagram, uh, b underscore Hayward underscore Randall. Hayward's yeah, so, my middle name. Ryan Hayward Randall. Yeah. So we'll put that in the. Uh, a link to that in the description. Cool. Uh, Instagram, yep. Twitter. Uh, I'm not on Twitter. Just I mean, I'm, uh, yeah, Instagram. I'm on Facebook. Same. Okay. Uh, B Hayward Randall on Facebook. Okay. All right. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> Thank you. All right.